Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today I'm in the whiskey capital of the Speyside. Yeah, it's Dufftown. You've probably already recognized the clock tower behind me. It's the clock tower of Dufftown. The city has about 1,600 inhabitants. Yeah, it's a very small, sleepy town in northern Scotland. But it is actually the richest city in the United Kingdom. At least it produces the most GDP per person. And that's because it has seven distilleries in, within the city and they produce a lot of GDP. And yeah, there's an old saying going, Rome was built on seven hills and Dufftown was built on seven stills. Yeah, and today we're gonna have a look at one of these distilleries and the distillery is the distillery of Mordlach. So let's have a look. Yeah, let's talk a bit about the history of Mortlach. Mortlach actually has a very, very long history because Mortlach was named after the town it was built in, Mortlach. But I've just told you that Mortlach lies within Dufftown. That's because the town of Mortlach was here before Dufftown and it's now kind of a region of Dufftown. And some people do still know the old name. The town of Mordlach goes back to the 7th century and there was a small monastery here. All around the small monasteries there was always a few houses being established as monasteries were kind of rich. And yeah, so the distillery was actually then founded in 1823. And if you keep close attention to uh, whiskey history, then you know 1823 was the year they legalized the distilling in the highlands. So probably they distilled a lot a long time before that, but they just got licensed back in 1823. And the man who licensed the distillery was James Feinlatter. And he ran the business with two other men. And yeah, in 1837, he kind of sold out to the Grand Brothers. He sold parts of the distillery to them and um, they produced whiskey with them. They actually owned a few other distilleries, so they took out a still and they rearranged stuff as the Grand Brothers were pretty famous for distilling whiskey and yeah, pretty big back in the time. Uh, five years later, they took over the whole distillery, so it got into the yeah, Grand Brothers company. Um, what is really important for the Mordlach distillery is uh, happened in 1953. And you can see that on the sign, George Crowey and Son. He took over the distillery with his sons and he rearranged the distillery a bit. And his son, uh, Alexander Crowey, was a doctor from Hong Kong. Back in the days, Hong Kong was a British colony or part of the British Empire. And he was a doctor and he did a lot of experimenting with potions and that's how he wanted to run the distillery. So when Alexander uh, came to the distillery, he um, ha did a lot of different uh, spirits with these stills and he mixed the spirits to get just the spirit that he thought was the best spirit for the market or for the consumer. And that's kind of the heart of the Mordlach distillery. We're going to have a look later in when we have a look at the still, so you'll find out more about that. The distillery then later got sold to Scottish malt distillers, which then ended up in uh, this United Distillers, and United Distillers founded then the big company of Diageo, which is still running the company today. So the distillery gets their water from various sources. We have the uh, uh, river right next to the distillery, we have the Cat's Craig Burn, and we have a source up in the Conval Hill mountain. The Conval Hill mountain is one of the mountains that's very close to the Ben Rinnes, and they build a mountain range that divides the glens, which is the Gaelic words for valley. Um, the river and the Cat's Craig Burn, they are um, only used for process water, so that is the water 
that is used to cool down the stills and all the other various steps where you need to remove heat from the process. And the Convalve Hills uh, source is very pure, very has very good quality and that is what ends up in the mash tun and whiskey will be made of that. So the malt here at the Maltlach distillery is uh, grinded down a bit more coarsely as it's usually done. Usually I have about 10% uh, flour, 70% grits and here at Mortlach you do it a bit more coarse, so you have 8% flour and 72% grits. So they just have the roller pins a bit further apart, so less of the grits are being crushed down into flour. Um, it's still done by an old Portier's malt mill from the 1960s. After it's been yeah, coarsely milled, the grist is stored here in a big hopper and then filled in to the big mash tun. And yeah, they always fill in 12 tons at a time and they're being mixed with water that is 64 degrees Celsius. And in the mash, there, is, there are enzymes and these enzymes split the starches into sugar. So almost all the starch is converted to sugar. So the mash, the wort afterwards, is really, really, really sweet. And that's exactly what you're looking for if you want to ferment it into alcohol. So after the first inserting, there is, uh, they sprinkle water onto the mash to dilute, uh, so have more sugar taken out of the, the grist. And they do it in a continuous way. So they start off with 72 degrees hot water and they go up continuously to 88 degrees water. In the end, we, we are, have roughly 54,000 liters of wort, and that's the perfect thing for the fermentation. So we have six wash bags, all filled up to 54,000 liters of volume. They're all made of Douglas fir. Some Americans call it Oregon pine. The warts, the, the sugary, malty water that is filled in here has to be cooled down before and it's cooled down to 16 degrees celsius and depending on the temperature you can have 18 or somewhere around there because this temperature really gives you the the speed of the fermentation and the speed of the fermentation is pretty important for the wash later for the flavor of the wash so the speed and the duration is very, very important. The duration here is of between 50 and 60 hours, and some shifts have 100 hours over the weekend, but the distillery knows their, their recipes. If they want to work seven days per week, then they have a bit of a different recipe to end up with the same flavor. And what they're looking for here is, they're looking for a really rich, intense, spicy wash. So a really a lot of character within the wash. Um, in the end you come out with about 7% ABV and that is the wash that is ready for the distillation. So I've already told you that Dr. Alexander Cowie had a bit of a fable for mixing potions and he also did a bit of mixing with the uh, raw spirit. So yeah, let's have a look at the stills. And the first thing that you recognize is no still looks like the other. They're all different. Yeah, but despite them all being different, they do have similarities. So they're all quite tall and they all do have a reflux bowl. So let's, let's have a look at how, what he did with the mixing. So they say here at uh, Mordlach, they have a recipe for their raw spirit and it's a 2.8 times distillation. So mm, really interesting. So how does that work? First of all, we have the first still, the big wash still. And that works together with the fourth still, the spirit still, the big spirit still. And they just work together in tandem, just like a normal double distillation, like in any other distillery. So yeah, then we have 
still number two and number three, that is the smaller wash stills. And they also do produce intermediate spirit. And then the uh, distilleries, uh, the stills in the back, they're a bit more special and they are being used twice or thrice. So that's where you have the triple distillation. And there is a still that actually has a name, the Wee Witchy, and we're gonna go back there, have a look at it. So now here comes back into the detail. What is really interesting here is that uh, the wash still in the second and third still, from, counted from the front, um, they classify their spirit a bit differently than other distilleries. Usually you have uh, the intermediate spirit and you have pot ale that you dispose of. And what they classify here is they have the intermediate spirit, like the hard piece, and then you have uh, feints, and then you have the pot ale. So these feints are classified differently than the other ones, which is unusual. Usually you just take one bit and give it into the spirit still. And so what they then do is they have a few dirt runs. So they have feints, they have the feints from the wash still, normal feints, four shots, and classified at some point to have been going into the dud run. And then you have the Wee Witchy, which is the, uh, counted from the back, the first still, a spirit still, that then distills this dud run. And it's kind of an intermediate still. And it's really, really nice to look at. There's a little witch in a sheet metal cut out, painted, and there's a little witch on the manhole as well. So it's, it's really a bit comical, but it's, it's really nice that they keep such details here. Yeah. And then you have the, the second still counted from the second, from the back, and that does the third and final distillation there. And in the end, they are being mixed by a recipe that Dr. Alexander written down, and you come out at 2.81 distillations. And the original recipe is stored very, very safe down in the safe in the south. And yeah, but Mordlach, the spirit of Mordlach is very rich, very strong, a bit sulfury, very, very aggressive. And that's why it's called the Beast of Dufftown. And usually when you have a long neck, you have a reflex bowl, it's usually pretty mild. Everybody gets out a pretty mild distillate. It depends on the speed you distill and on something else. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So basically, what we do have is these old, incredibly looking uh, worm tubs that are made of large. And basically, a worm tub is a very, very big tub filled with water. It's being filled from the bottom and then emptied at the top. And what the difference is between a normal shell and tube condenser is that you have a lot less copper contact. So the copper contact here at Mortloch is minimized. Copper contact usually does these catalytic reactions that make the whiskey a bit more soft, a bit more round. And that's what the people here don't want that much. They want a bit of a, an edgy, rich, strong character. And that's what the people around here are not used to. And that's why they call them the beast of Dufftown. So the distillery has four warehouses on site. They're all Dunwich warehouses and the whiskey casks are stacked up two or three high, two if they're big sherry casks and three if they're hogsheads or bourbon barrels. Um, usually the distillery was known for their sherry casks. Back in the days, the distillery nearly exclusively stored their whiskey in ex-sherry butts. Um, nowadays, you also see these ex-American oak, ex-bourbon hogsheads or American standard barrels. And what is very interesting about the maturation and the character of Mortla is that uh, due to that uh, strong and rich character, you 
you feel the distillery character a bit more sustainable during the maturation. Where a light whiskey, the distillery character fades out and the, the cask character takes over, the Mordlach just keeps on going. So you can have a 12 year old, a 16 year old and still feel that, that distillery character within the whiskey very strongly. And that is very interesting for whiskey because you can have more different characters within a very long aged whiskey and we're going to find out that during a little interview. So this was it with the production and now I'm having a little interview with uh, Rune Molvik. You've been 20 years within the industry yeah. and you've been doing everything from malting to distilling to warehouse management and even bottling so thank you very much for having us here. Thanks yeah, for showing us around the distillery. Absolutely, nice to have you here as well. Yes, so uh, we have a great range at Mortlach now. Uh, what are we going to have today? Okay, so we are really excited about the new range. So it only came out last year. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to talk about and taste today? Mm -hmm. It's going to be the 12 year old. Okay. So um, we're going to have the 16 year old. Mm -hmm. And we're going to finish off with the pinnacle of the range is 20 year old. Okay, quite a nice range. and. Uh, yeah, let's have the 12 year old. So what is it matured? How, how, what's the style? Okay, so the 12 year old is um, what we would probably call is the, the closest one to the distillery kind of character. Mm -hmm. So what you have, you have um, obviously it's, it's quite good color in it. It's, um, it's a combination of um, American and mm -hmm. uh, sherry casks. So when we're talking about Mortlach uh, as a whiskey, you know, it's the beast of Daftan. Mm -hmm. And we talk about um, it being probably, without being smoky, it's probably the closest you get to a peaty whiskey without the smoke. Mm -hmm. So it's that bold, um, bold um, new make spirit. Mm -hmm. And we combine it with here in American and um, sherry casks to retain that still a, a sulfur meaty um, new make but combined with those vanilla uh, dried fruit characters so as well. It's, it's quite intense. Is it, is it a 46 percent? It's actually, you can see here, mm -hmm. all of them are the same 43.4 percent. Okay, that's quite odd. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> did, did you find like that's the best? Or? That is the best that this whiskey comes out at. And if you think mm -hmm. about our, our master blender, Craig Wilson, mm -hmm. who's uh, developed this, this pack or this tree of, um, of whiskies, um, he's the one that's kind of developed uh, based on what, what we can offer and what the customer is looking for as well. And I think he's done a really good job in terms of um, the, the final product. Okay. We're really proud of it. So, so you said it's bourbon and sherry oak. Yeah. Is it a, a mixture or is it a finish? Yeah, it's a mixture of both. So, mm -hmm. it's, uh, so you have um, aged in uh, American for 12 years and mm -hmm. you also got uh, some in sherry for 12 years. Oh, okay. Minimum of 12 years. So would you, do, you don't tell the ratio? No. Oh, <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we need to keep some to ourselves. Oh, it's lovely. Mm. Okay, yeah. slender. Slender. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay, the nose was, I would have said, a bit milder. Mm -hmm. But now you really feel the beast of, of Dovetown. It's quite spicy, eh? Whoa, yeah. Mm, even a bit aromatic, like mm. um, a slight vanillic note. So, so you really don't have any peat in there? No, none. Oh, okay. Mm, it's rich, spicy. I like it. Good. So, you, but you call yourself a Speyside distillery. Yeah. But you're not the typical, the stereotypical space side distillery. No, yeah. it's uh, obviously um, it's a <clears throat> best kept secret. So if we, we look at Dufton, um, we've got seven distilleries up here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that was how it started out with seven distilleries. Think about the best kept secret was Mortlach in terms of the richness was favored, favored by blenders. So much so that Johnny Walker bought it in 1923 <laughs> to keep that um, and use that for blending as well. Mm -hmm. So the blenders have kept that themselves until the last few years. We've managed to get some of this uh, released as single malts as well. 
Mm -hmm. When you released it, so um, you created a whole new range. Yeah, um, that's quite an exciting step. Um, how did you do that? Was that production led or market led, or how, how does that work? I think there has always been more like amongst all the, the connoisseurs of um, of whiskies. They're always mm -hmm. uh, seen as more like as um, a really um, well. We see as almost like a crown jewel, jewel in what we have. Mm -hmm. um, but the interest has always been there. We had a, a range previously. Um, I mean, learned from that. Uh, we have now created something that is um, the cons consumer wants. And mm -hmm. I think the, the feedback we have from you know having done tastings here, having done tours, it's been really good and. Uh, People are enjoying what we are presenting to them. So, mm -hmm. but it's been been led by the. Um, we have a whiskey team uh, mm -hmm. down in, in Scotland, and Craig Wilson, who's the master blender, has been the kind of um, working with the markets, working with uh, with ourselves to create this um, these three varieties. Uh, we also got the fourth one, which is the 14 year old as well mm -hmm. for duty free. So, so he's he's been the kind of the the nose and the taste of it, if you will. Mm -hmm. so, so did he come often around here and Craig, talk to um, you? Uh... Craig uh, speaks to us and we, um, obviously, we uh, is close to what we're doing uh, and mm -hmm. also so with the maturation part of it as well to make sure that we are putting things into the correct um, wood mm -hmm. so that what he is looking for or we are looking for from a flavor profile is what we get at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, um, yeah, it's a teamwork. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. So mm, now we're moving up to the 16 year old, right? Yeah, the 16 year old was probably. Um, I think we gave it a whiskey award. I, I think I've already tried that one, or was that? Oh, I'm not quite sure. So yeah, I, I know that it's good, but yeah. <laughs> let's this, try it anyway. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. There you go. That's for that one. So for the 16 year old, so what we have is if you look at the, the color of that one, you know, it's got pretty good. Good color. Mm -hmm. It's a bit more color than uh, the twelve-year-old. So this is purely and uh, sherry cask. A pure sherry cask. Pure whiskey. sherry cask. Absolutely. The difficulty we had with this one to develop it was that amongst the the supporters or fans of Mortlake was it was flora and fauna. It's always hailed as a absolutely fantastic whiskey, and it absolutely is. Um, so to come up with a 16 year old to match that one is always going to be difficult but I think what Craig has done with this is done it justice and we come up with something that is is really um, some say even better than the flora and fauna <laughs> okay. but I'll let, let you decide <laughs> oh yeah the, the flora and fauna was your like your main whiskey for years yeah and it kind of competes with the with the 16 now yeah so yeah, there, there is no more left of the flora and fauna, I'm afraid. So, <laughs> but we think this is uh, this is the best one. You know, they're, so they're big, big sh uh, shoes to fill. But let's yeah. let's give it a try. Mm. So, what do you think of this one in terms of from the twelve moving up? I'm, I'm amazed that it it's n it's not harsh on the nose. It's it's pretty. Nice on the nose, but I'm, I'm afraid that that it's gonna it beast's gonna hit me again with the with the taste. Mm, yeah. Let's have a look. Mm. 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 This is one of these strange ones again. You do have a bit of a a roundness, a creaminess from I would say the Oloroso casks, mm -hmm. but there's also when you swallow it, you you do feel the spiciness. You do feel a bit of a, a hotness, even like a mm. yeah. It's now that that you come to the the finish that it, it's it even gets more spicy and more intense. It's 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 one of these roller coaster whiskeys where you're like mm, mm -hmm. nice start, then you try it, oh it gets spicier, oh it. It really picks up. Yeah, yeah. No, it has a, a long finish on it. Mm, you yeah. feel that, you know, in terms of the the, the sherry cask, the tannins <coughs> coming through at the back of your tongue. So it's mm -hmm. holding on to that a slightly kind of bitter sweetness at the end. Mm -hmm. And um, a little bit of chocolate note as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little bit of yeah. a bittersweet chocolate note in the end. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So you brought out the new range, and it's pretty good. I, I I do like it. I do know the customers also like it. 
good. As they buy a lot. <laughs> and um, are you thinking about expanding the range at all? Is there anything new coming? We've heard a bit of a rumor, I think, a few weeks ago about a, a GOT coming out. <laughs> so, so <laughs> yeah, so I suppose for, from our point of view, it's like we got the 12, um, 16 and 20. Mm -hmm. We also got the duty free, which is um, mm -hmm. a 14 year old. It's actually mm -hmm. the most spicy one in the range. Oh, okay. It's actually very worth trying as well. If you're ever tra traveling, it'll be on duty free. Mm -hmm. um, anything new coming? Yeah, there has been this year. We always had a 47 year old mortal -like coming out. Really mm -hmm. exciting as well. But um, watch this space. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be things coming out. Um, we had exciting things at the distillery this year in the whiskey festival where we mm -hmm. had a fill your own bottle. So that was a 19-year-old uh, sherry cask, and people come down to the warehouse there and filled it, cool. uh, put the name onto the ledger, and I thought that was really cool. So you, you're not open to the public, like as in always, but That's correct. during the whiskey festival you do take tours. We do advertise tours. We've been doing that the last few years. Mm -hmm. and do you uh, have to register first, or so if you go into the Spirit of Space side um, mm -hmm. uh, website? I think it's the end of January they open up for tours, mm -hmm. uh, or you can buy tickets. So that's mm -hmm. what we would do, ask people to go in there. Okay, and then you accept these visitors as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, if you want but to... But it's a limited visit. space, so limited you space. need to be quick. You need <laughs> to be quick. quick. Is it already it, sold out for next year? No, one? it hasn't been even advertised for next year. So, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so we, we have not finalized uh, what we're doing in the beginning of May next year. So mm -hmm. we. You know, I wouldn't say, I can't guarantee that we will have loads of tours, but mm -hmm. um, hopefully we'll be doing something. Okay, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the, the 20 year old because I, I said in the, in the warehouse uh, that it's a bit more sustainable for the, for the distillery character so it doesn't faint off with the 20 year old whiskey. Because uh, usually if you have a lighter spirit, then you don't only get casks with a, with a 20 year old whiskey, so I'm, I'm really excited about this one. Yeah. If it's still that spiciness from the distillery character. Yeah, I think um, <coughs> here we have the, the 20 year old here. So if you, if you think about this one, you know, so compared to the, the 16 year old, it's not as dark in color. Ooh, okay. That's, that's so, unusual. So it, what's it matured in? It's matured in a combination of sherry and mm -hmm. also some ex American as well. Okay. So, what you will have is, you know, the, the 12 year old gives you a real um, hangs on to that uh, distillery character. The 16 year old is, is more a sherry, but mm -hmm. still have that spiciness or richness or more like. This one is actually it's a bit more mellow in terms of taste, mm -hmm. but it's so much, it's on like a creamy type more like, but it, you still have the the distillery character after 20 years, mm -hmm. not overpowered by the, the sherry. It's, 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 a, it's bit a really less balanced, for sure. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's more balanced. Um, I think it's, you know, the, the blue seal, it comes from blue, Cowie's blue seal, which is George Cowie and Alexander Cowie. And it's. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. So the, the blue seal, that Cowie's blue seal, there yeah. used to be a whiskey, right? Yeah, it used. So what was quite interesting was that um, one of um, George Alexander's Cowie's uh, relatives were um, working in a cottage that once used to be, uh, belong to them and renovating it. And she found this case of bottles of whiskey and it's called uh, Cowie's Blue Seal. And what we think is that that's what they kept for themselves, but that was the best stuff. <laughs> okay? okay. So we thought, well, we'll need to base a 20 year old on the best of what the the cowies actually made, so and that's why the, it's called the blue seal. So you got your master blenders to taste that old stuff and <laughs> absolutely. I think that's you know Craig is as I said Craig Wilson and the team down there has done an amazing job in, in terms of, of getting those you know gets three whiskies here but are quite different but mm -hmm. still have that more like feel to them. So mm -hmm. uh, and the twenty year old just finishes beautifully. Um, Mm -hmm. The range, and, and I hope you. And, find the, and the twelve year old is called the Wee Wiki, so it's it's a bit more for the distillery character, would you say? Like represents yeah. the distillery pretty good. Absolutely. And yeah. this one is the the old one. Oh, okay, I like it. I like I like the style and, and, the, <laughs> and the little details on it. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, good. It's cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. A lot of maturity. Mm. So you, you get a good more amount of oak. Mm -hmm. Still a bit of spiciness in the back and it as it progresses it becomes stronger. So so that's a bit of the, the Mothlach spiciness that yeah. it, so the distillery character lives more in the aftertaste then? So like the middle or later parts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you mm -hmm. definitely get some of the the American mm -hmm. vanilla sweet notes. Oh you do, do. And you, you have that spicy but the kind of dry fruit type mm -hmm. that it's not as uh, as dominant as what you have in a, the the sixteen year old. Mm -hmm. So it's a much, much more. It's a, a really balanced between the two um, uh, kind of uh, wood types. Plus mm -hmm. you have that nice distillery spicy um, kind of meatiness mm -hmm. is still there in the background as well. Mm. I like that. I like the twenty year old. It's it's a really well balanced whiskey. Mm. If you focus on the on the fruity side, you do get a bit of fruitiness. Mm, yeah. If you focus on, on the distillery character, you have a bit of a spiciness, you have a bit of an oak. There is, I mean, that with the maturity, there's a bit of a, a roundness, a bit of a settled note to it. So, um, that's a good drum. <laughs> I like it too. And the cowies liked it as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. So, mm. yeah. Mm. Good. But if you look, if you put so much heart into it, I wouldn't expect anything else from it. <laughs> Absolutely, no. It's. Uh, it, I think that's for us. It's. Uh, you know. It's so exciting at the distillery to have, you know, these this new range out. It's a lot of excitement mm -hmm. uh, for the for the operators that work here, for the team around here as well. So it really is, and it's good for to get visitors to come and share share this with as well. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's nice to see. So so one last question. I'm seeing here. There's a a copper jigger, a, a copper mixing spoon, and. So I've seen a bit of a shake over there. You're getting a bit into the cocktail mixing business? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really a cocktail maker myself. But okay. uh, <laughs> but what I would say, so the twenty year old, I probably wouldn't use that for cocktails. But um, <laughs> it, it, at the end of the day, it's a personal choice. You know, we we do encourage um, ourselves as well to try different things. Mm -hmm. So although we love them um, straight, like we have them now, or with a bit of water, or whatever you prefer. Mm -hmm. I do have a, a sweet spot for if you make an old fashioned of a want like 16 year old. Mm. And yeah, it's a want like 16 year old I would make it from. But it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and mm -hmm. I, would, uh, I would recommend trying something like that even with a 12 year old as well. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, just you know, doing it traditional is, is great, but also having that, mm -hmm. uh, thinking about what it could be if you try something different. And it also introduces new people you know, to the, the whiskey car um, the kind of category as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's no rules. If you, if you want to try it, why not? Yeah, it's always a matter of taste. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's always so, a matter of taste. So we keep that and um, yeah, we have made some cocktails here where we continue to do that as well. And okay, yeah, uh, I'm really absolutely. excited about that yeah. in the future. Absolutely. So yeah, thank you very much for showing us around. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for the whiskey. Yeah, it's um, a pleasure, absolutely. Yeah, so Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, then please feel free to share it with your friends and see you next time.